Today's question in our course on variation looks at a particular social variable which we call sex and it basically concerns whether or not the people using language are men or women. That's a social variable. It's not a linguistic variable. And we're looking for linguistic variables that might correlate with that social variable, men, women. Note uh, that we're talking about uh, a biological reality. When, when we're talking about uh, things that are a feminine or masculine or male or female, uh, we can be talking about cultural variables. But here in social linguistics, we, we, we're looking at uh, the f physiological, biological fact of men and women. So we talk about sex variables and not about gender variables, which would be more culturally determined. Note also that the question uh, doesn't concern whether or not languages are sexist. Uh, the problem of, of, of whether uh, pro the pronoun system of English is sexist or the pronoun system of Spanish uh, or the, the, the article system of Spanish or French, whether or not these are sexist and represent patriarchal so uh, societies is quite possible, but that's not the question we're looking at here. We're looking at possible correlations between the users of language rather than the nature of the language systems themselves. Now, w when I ask students if uh, they speak differently, if the men speak differently from the women, or the women from the men, uh, the answer is usually no. We speak the same language, uh, and we use language the same way. And I think that's good. It's good that people believe that and, um, and see language, whatever language, as a truly democratic, egalitarian instrument. However, we can do research to see if this assumed sameness uh, really holds up. What does the research say? If you look at any of the textbooks in social linguistics, look up sex variables, you will get lots of wonderful exotic examples of societies where men's language and women's language is fundamentally different. Uh, in Bengali, for example, uh, men use all and women for initial n and women and children don't. Okay. Uh, other languages, uh, men have certain syntactic structures and women have other ones. Uh, forms of address are for women, uh, other forms of address are for men. Uh, if you look at that wide uh, linguistic data, there can be little doubt that language is one of the ways in which uh, a female or a man's status or a woman's status is signified culturally. However, uh, we, there's a certain resistance in our societies to recognize anything like that happening. Uh, even when you point out, well, we are built uh, physiologically quite differently, so the pitch of the voice I is different in women and men. Yes, but that's screened out as an irrelevant detail. Uh, we do believe that language is, in its use and potential, uh, democratic and egalitarian since we're using language to say that, in any case. Um, other data is, 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 is also perhaps more misleading. Um, for example, uh, in Scotland it's found that uh, girls tend to say water and got, and boys tend to, tend to say water and got. They, they leave out the, uh, the post-vocalic T. Okay. Or in uh, Montreal, Men don't pronounce the O in il, elle, la, le. Uh, what can we say? Uh, generally, uh, men speak worse than women, or women speak better than men. Uh, what you're saying is really um, that in these particular societies, uh, women uh, tend to be more engaged in social mobility, so girls are taught to speak correctly, uh, to use the variance of the higher social class or the classes a little higher than them. And uh, at the same time, uh, boys tend to promote uh, um, 
the solidarity of the lower class, things like football, thing, things like masculinity are not associated with high class, and so they tend to imitate the variants associated with the lower class. Uh, we'll find that very clearly in Trudgill's research and in analyses of estuary English, of the kind of English uh, that's used uh, in and around London. Uh, there, however, I don't know if people are manifesting uh, their sex or they're, they're manifesting s relations with prestige. Uh, but I think we're getting close there. It's interesting to ask if in our society um, uh, women are trained to seek a certain kind of class-based prestige going upwards and men uh, are trained to go the other way. And there are people in between who can do weird and wonderful things as they see fit. Laboff, in his research, certainly found that women, uh, for him, one of the major, uh, main agents of, of language change, uh, women tend to hypercorrect. They tend to speak more correctly than what is correct, uh, which indicates an extreme concern with social mobility. Uh, Labov, however, has been criticized uh, for seeing women's speech in terms of deviation, as if women are doing something special and men retain the norm. I, I'm sure that wasn't his, his intention. I, I, I suspect that he didn't look closely at issues of uh, sex variables in a society where he was far, far more concerned with race variables at that time. Another piece of classic research is Robin Lakoff's, uh, which you can find recorded uh, all over the place. And uh, she uh, claims, for example, that women uh, use more hedges and fillers. They, they, say, oh, um, they use more question tags. Uh, they have empty adjectives. Uh, they use rising intonation, which we'll see later uh, on a de declarative uh, statement. Uh, all of which she seems is indicating a lack of confidence that women, when they use language, uh, don't do so with the same assertiveness as men. Uh, and other research uh, by Deborah Tannen and going on uh, in, in, into more recent social linguistics uh, reaches the kind of claim that women uh, use language for different purposes or tend to use it for, for different purposes. Um, uh, language is used uh, to enact solidarity with the other, especially if women are speaking with women, uh, to be open to the other. Instead of staying something, we're going to make a proposition and allow the other to come in and build on it. Whereas men tend to see language as giving information and exchanging information. Men are going out to hunt buffaloes and women are staying at home to take care of the tribe. Uh, I suspect that is um, as much... Um, a myth a, as a social reality, in the extent that these myths are operative within our societies. Women do seem to be using language differently from men in conversations. What's interesting, though, is, you look at the, is to look at the research then on mixed sex conversation. What happens in conversations where men are present and women are present? And uh, there, uh, the finding by Kramer, for example, uh, is that uh, do women speak more than men? No. In mixed uh, sex conversations, men tend to speak more than women because they want to dominate the conversation. Men tend to take the initiative, announcing new topics. Men tend to interrupt more. Uh, men interrupt women far more than women interrupt men. Uh, and she finds that women use more back-channeling than men. Women give more support. They say, uh-huh, mm -hmm, really, oh yeah, right. All those sort of back-channels that come in and support the other when they're speaking, they're used more by women than men. Uh, she also found that women who attain a position of power adopt the kind of strategies. They speak in the same way as men, but they occupy less floor time. They speak for not as long as the men. Those kinds of findings are interesting. We can test them. Uh, we have an exercise to do where you're asked to test that. But you can also listen to yourselves uh, down at the cafeteria and see if men are really using women, uh, ooh, if <laughs> they're using language in exactly the same way. <laughs>